So you reached fourth year. Congratulations! <laughs> Ikaw ba isang poor high school student from a far-flung province na gusto maging surgeon pero walang connections at pera to support your career goals? Wes, let me show you how. Hi guys! For those who are new here, this is Search On. In here, we are going to talk about everything surgical. And by everything surgical, I think this is the first question that needs to be answered. How to be a surgeon in the Philippines? So in this vlog, I will show you the roadmap and how long it takes to become a surgeon, as well as tips and tricks on how to survive, aka not die along the way. This is from a high school student's point of view, since most high school students are still at a crossroad and confused with the path they want to take. So let's start with a timeline. To be a surgeon after high school, you need to go through at least 4 years of college pre-med. Another year of review if ever your pre-med is in a medical field since they usually require a licensure exam. Four years of med school proper, one year of review for the medical board exam, at least five years of general surgery residency, at least, and a year or so of review in the diplomate exams, both oral and written. All in all, it would be 16 years or at least 11 years of medical education. Assuming you didn't enter straight programs in surgery specializations, which I will tackle later on, and that you go through med school and surgery residency without failing grades and with good performance, or moments of quitting. Otherwise, madadelay ka ng ilang taon. Kung ayaw mo madelay, listen to tips I will share throughout this vlog. Okay, so my roadmap na tayo. Now let's break it down. First, choosing your college pre-med. The first thing you need to do is choose the right college pre-med. Technically, all courses can be a pre-med course. It doesn't need to be in a medical field. But if you want your life to be easier during med school, choose a medical pre-med course. This also psychs you up and prepares you for med school proper. If you feel your medical pre-med is already stressing you out, mag-isip-isip ka na if being a doctor is your true calling. As for me, my pre-med was nursing, and yes, it stressed me out. But not because of workload or because I can't handle the lessons, but because of the social interaction. As a nurse, you have to be empathic and sociable and sensitive, and I hate social interactions. And since I have no way out of nursing at that time, the thought of proceeding to med school sustained me throughout nursing school. If you are determined to be a surgeon, useful pre-med courses include Biology, MedTech, PT, Nursing. So Biology, Biggest Pro, Gamay na gamay mo ang body parts. Embryology, How the body works. Cons, Hindi ka exposed to hospital setting. So mas mag adjust ka sa med school compared to other med students with a medical pre-med. You should also consider fallbacks. Dapat may fallback ka anywhere along your path to become a surgeon. Because not all will survive surgery. Not all will survive even med school. If ever you don't survive med school, wala kang dagdag na R sa pangalan mo sa biology dahil walang board exam. Though you can always proceed to research or enter the academe and earn a lot, even earn better than some doctors. So you also have to take this into consideration. Medtech, pros. You get to have the right balance of medical concept and hospital exposure. You have a good foundation in biochemistry which will come in handy during med school. And your skill in IV insertion will save you during clerkship in fourth year. Especially in hospitals na lahat pinapatrabaho sa clerks. Cons. I can't see any cons because personally, I think medtech is the best pre-med course. Nursing. Pros. Perhaps the course with the most hospital exposure. Being the ones most exposed to patient care, ibang care and sensitivity to patient na galing sa nurse. They have a sharper clinical eye and lahat ng medical jargons ng doctors, may idea sila. Alam ng nurses ang pasikot-sikot at kalakaran sa ward. Kaya mas madali sa kanila ang clerkship. Marunong sila makibagay sa staff and they know how to handle toxic patients because they have experience dealing with them during their pre-med. Cons. Speaking as a nurse, hindi ganoon ka-focus ang foundation ng nursing with the disease process compared to medtech. Hindi din ganun ka-focus sa biochem ang nursing curriculum. Yes, we have the foundation pero hindi ga ano cellular level. More siya on patient management and overall well-being. Holistic approach. So nurses have to give extra effort in learning technical concepts. Autophysiology, anatomy, pharma, nursing scratch the surface. In medicine, we just have to break the glass. PT. Kung gusto mong gamay na gamay mo ang anatomy, choose PT. Lahat ng ugat, muscle, tendon, blood vessel, you name it, they've studied it. It gives them an extra advantage in anatomy and surgery. Also, same with nurses and medtech, 
you have the security of a fallback. Kung na-realize mo na ayaw mo pala mag-doktor, you can always take the board exam and be a registered PT. Cons Siguro not as much hospital exposure din, and not much concept in other aspects outside of anatomy, like pato, pharma, biochem. So although you have a great knowledge in one area, you will exert extra effort in other aspects as well. All in all, all pre-med courses have their pros and cons. All pre-med courses will be difficult to a student that doesn't study and make efforts to learn. Kahit anong pre-med yan, kung disiplinado ka, makaka-graduate ka. Perhaps even securing a medical scholarship. Four years of pre-med is more than enough time, not to mention four years of med school. This is sufficient time to make up for the concepts you are not familiar with when you entered med school. We have classmates who have accountancy and research backgrounds, and their pre-med courses did not get in the way of them graduating. Everything is doable. Other tips during pre-med? Aside from the obvious do well to get a scholarship, siguro take review classes for NMAT. Entering med school now is more difficult than ever, and you may think an NMAT of 80 is okay dahil 75 up daw ang pasok, but your 80 will seem low compared to someone else's 98. The reality is, you will be compared to your peers, and the areas that really matter in med school is NMAT, interview, and pre-med grades. Since iba-iba ang colleges and pre-med courses, the areas where you can be compared with others equally is in your NMAT and your interview. And an NMAT review will spell the difference between an 80 and perhaps an 85. Whatever gives you a higher chance of being accepted, gawin mo. Also, all universities across the country that has a medical school offer free education. But again, slots are limited. So do well in your pre-med. Umaabot ng 200,000 ang tuition and expenses ng ibang med school. So a free medical education is a huge, huge blessing. Use this privilege to your advantage. Med School Tips Med school is made up of four years of studying, three years in a classroom followed by one year of hospital clerkship. The first two years of med school is spent on fundamental concepts. If you want to have a good foundation from surgery, devote enough time to anatomy and physiology. Any book would do. Because basically, anatomy is one aspect of medicine that is uniform all throughout. No big variations between textbooks and doesn't change significantly from decades ago. Ang lungs mo, dalawa noong time ni Hippocrates. Hanggang ngayon, dalawa pa rin. Para thyroid na siguro ang bagong addition dyan. As such, I use an anatomy textbook that is surgical in approach during my med school. Meaning, the approach to identify your body parts is like cutting your patient during surgery. It is easier to understand since hindi bulleted ang approach like Snell which forces you to memorize and not really comprehend. And as someone that has the memory of a goldfish, that fight is a losing battle. Pag interconnected ang body parts mo, mas madaling aralin. Also, hindi mo lang naaaral ang anatomy. You also become familiar with surgery concepts, which will come in handy later on during your third year. My book is Anatomy in Surgery by Philip Torek. Circa 1980s pa ata. Wala nang next edition yan. So lahat na nakikita mo ngayon online are photocopies. Photocopy siya sa my times na mahirap basahin ang labels. Dahil dyan, may isa pa akong tip. Use Gray's Atlas of Anatomy in conjunction with your Thorek. I won't recommend Netter's Anatomy because I find it confusing. Yes, Netter's Anatomy is nice to look at with all the paintings and all. But I think it's good to note that Netter's was initially marketed for aesthetics and not for learning. So Netter's was commissioned to create drawings for a pharmaceutical company for pamphlet purposes. They compiled all his drawings and made a book out of it. I'm the type na pag arteries ang topic, gusto ko ang nakikita ko arteries lang. Pag ginaluan mo ng veins, nerves, iba may muscles pa, so halo-halo ang Netter's. I find that confusing. You can't easily focus on a certain body part. You learn when you break topics down. A netter doesn't really break topics down. Mas na-appreciate ko ang mga drawings ni Machado, who continued netter's legacy after he died. Grace Atlas also has better concepts when it comes to difficult topics like the inguinal canal or oral cavity or pelvic muscles. Mahirap ito sa 2D paintings ng netters, pero digestible sa 3D concept ng Grace. Brush strokes ng netters can be distracting also. Kung gusto mo ng malinis at simpleng drawing, I highly recommend Grace. During in third year, you will have your surgery subject. Students usually dread the subject because most students dito bumabagsak at napapalis sa med school. Kung baga, ginagawa itong sala na ibang schools. Well, most schools actually. And rightfully so, since sa board exam mo, ito usually ang pinakamahirap na subject. Siguro second to the lowest na grades na marami. 
Siyempre, ang pinakamalit na grado mo is always the last exam, which is preventive medicine. I think one of the reasons why nahihirapan ng mga students sa surgery is the amount of concept that you need to digest in a given span of time. The latest Schwartz Principles of Surgery, the 10th edition, is nearly 2,000 pages and you are given just how many weeks to read the book na napakahirap ang intindihin dahil maraming pasikot-sikot and maraming kailangan i-memorize. Not to mention you have other subjects like IM, Pedia, Pato, OB, etc. na puro makakapal din ng libro. You have to juggle all that during your senior years. So tip ko is, know the basic and must knows. You can read it all. You will not finish that book before your board exam. What makes you think you can finish it all during med school? Distribute your energy well. Do advanced readings when you are not that busy in your first year. Do review readings when you are in your clerkship, internship, and reviewing for your board exam. Small frequent feedings. But during your surgery lectures, follow the Pareto Principle or the 80-20 rule. Do the important 20% of work that will lead you to 80% of the outcome you want. Conserve your energy and work smart. Clerkship. So you reached fourth year. Congratulations. You are now a clerk roaming around the hospital. Some of you already have an idea at this stage what you want to become in the future. Kung wala ka pang idea kung gusto mong mag-surgery at this time, now is the right time to create that idea. Hindi ka babarded ng lectures. Andiyan ka sa hospital to observe and to gain experience. The hospital is a gold mine of knowledge for a clerk. Observe how surgery residents work, the skills they possess and master, how they communicate, and how they endorse patients. Mga common and must know surgical cases they handle, asking them to allow you to suture a wound or intubate a patient or assist in a long operation, etc. This gives you a taste of what it will be like to be a surgery resident. In a way, mag-engage mo kung kayo mo bang i-handle ang stress and workload, especially the culture that is often associated with surgery. Also, aim for a Best in Surgery Award. It will give you a bit of an advantage if you want to apply for surgery residency in your school hospital. Pag maganda ang track record mo as a clerk, this will increase your chances of being hired for residency later on. Ayaw ng surgery residency or any department at that, ang taong tamad at mahirap katrabaho. Internship. Use your time as an intern to study for the board exam. Choose a hospital that will give you time to study. Ang goal mo during internship is to learn concepts that will come in handy for the upcoming exam of your life. Hindi ito ang panahon para magpakaalipin ka sa trabaho. Yes, your residents know that. We have been there. We know that your board exam is first priority, as should be. Huwag magpakahiro. If you want to be of better help, pass the licensure exam and apply for surgical residency thereafter. You need to help yourself first before you can help others. Licensure exam Aside from your class standing and your med school grade in surgery, one thing that will also help you during residency application, if not the most important, is your board exam rating. Because real talk, you will be judged by your board rating. Sabi ng iba, grabe naman, hindi naman yan ang basihan ng katalinuhan, blah blah blah. Well, you have two choices. Accept the fact that it will matter and work your ass off for the next few months like your whole life depends on it because it actually kind of does. Or spend the rest of your life rationalizing that your board exam did not affect your career choice in any way. It will matter if you apply for your residency. It will matter when you apply for a fellowship. Kung hindi ka masyadong nag-effort during med school, this is a time to redeem yourself. Ace all your subjects and not just surgery. Your goal is to pass with high grades. Not to pass in surgery alone but flunk in other subjects. Every subject matters. Since may time ka pa ngayon, paghirapan mong itaas. This is the greatest test of your entire life. Alam lahat ng classmates mo na magpitake ka. Alam ng pamilya mo. Alam ng school mo. Alam pati ng kapitbahay mo. Gulatin mo silang lahat. Ayan! So this is 5 years or more of the most difficult time of your life. I think surgical residency demands a separate vlog in itself. Lahat ng pinagdadaan mo going up the career ladder at this point ay wala sa kalingkingan ng residency. Residency will break you. You will fall and rise up again, but residency will break you again. And again and again. So first tip ko dito, Take a gap year. Your gap year will be your time to number one, decide, and number two, rest. Decide for a year. I know you think that you have decided after passing, but take time to reconsider. Surgery residency is notorious for having one of the highest rate of quitting, if not the highest. So if you have the opportunity to reconsider, reconsider. Maraming dahilan kung bakit nakikwit ang residente. Workload, work environment, ego, health factors, burnout, etc. Which leads me to number 2, rest. You will go on 36-hour duties at times. At times that we don't do 16 hours of work all day every day. 
So, walang ganon. Sometimes as is in 8 to 12 hours of surgeries, and most of the time, you will be hooked to your patients and be on hospital arrest. They call it residency for a reason. Residente ka ng hospital dahil dyan ka magtatrabaho, matutulog, mabubuhay sa loob ng limang taon. You are granted a few days of leave per year, kaya wag magmadali. Travel for a year, have fun, sleep. You won't get a lot of that during surgery. Next tip, Come prepared. If decided ka na, be prepared to make surgery your life for the next 5 years. mag ng patience, effort, discipline, at sanda makmak na humility. Leave all your ego at the door. Di ba walang nakalagay na knowledge? Kasi at this point, alam namin lahat na matalino ka. Nakapasa ka na ng board exam. But what will make you stay in surgery is your discipline. Maraming matalino nagkukwit sa residency dahil ayaw magpadisiplina. Dapat marunong ka rin maging team player because it requires a team to care for a surgical patient. Hindi mo kaya mag yan. You will need help during operations, during post of monitoring, daily dressings, daily rounds, lahat. You have a long list of surgical skills you need to perform based on your year level. And you need to comply with all of those in order to be promoted and eventually graduate. And to top it all off, may research ka pa na kailangan i-comply before gum graduate. The last thing the department needs is a lazy resident. That being said, you still have to allot time for your personal growth and study period. You are required to pass 1 out of 3 series exams during the first 3 years and 1 out of 2 during the 4th to 5th years. You will be evaluated yearly kung ipopromote ka to the next year level. They will take into consideration your exam performance, your research, your workmanship, your skills as a surgeon, and your attitude. So if you want to graduate on time or simply to graduate and not get booted out of the program, take into consideration every little aspect. Congrats! You graduated! So what's next? Well, technically, you are now a general surgeon, but general surgeons are highly encouraged to be a fellow of the Philippine Society of General Surgeons and Philippine College of Surgeons. PSGS maintains quality surgical healthcare throughout the country by providing accreditations for surgery programs in hospitals nationwide. By being a fellow of PSGS, Marami kang trainings na pwedeng gawin. May conventions na pwedeng atinan to make you a better surgeon and to update you with the latest developments in surgery. Kasi nag-iiba ang manage na pasyente throughout the years. They provide a standard with which you can gauge yourself as a surgeon which will ultimately benefit patients you will operate on. So take the certifying exams and be a fellow. Familiar with the letters FPCS and FPSGS after the letters MD sa pangalan ng ibang doktor? So ito yun. Pwede ka rin mag-subspecialization. So some hospitals offer direct programs for neurosurgery, neurosurgery, plastics and recon, etc. Pwede ka rin mag-GS and apply for subspec after mong graduate 3, 4, 5 years depending on your desired subspec. Ayan! So dyan na lang muna tayo because surgery will be overwhelming at this point if hindi pa kayo overwhelmed already. So this vlog is not meant to discourage you because surgery is fun. Yay! <laughs> this is meant to psych you up and give you a roadmap on the road to hell. Kidding aside, this is meant to prepare you for what you are up against and make you realize that although the road to surgery is long and tedious, it is attainable. If there is one word that will make you a surgeon, it is grit. Unyielding courage in the face of hardship, it is meant to be extra hard. If it isn't hard, everyone will be a surgeon. So that's it for the first episode of Your Road to Hell. If you have any questions regarding surgery residency or med school as a whole, comment down below and we will discuss them in our upcoming vlogs. So see you again next week for more tips on surviving aka not dying during surgery residency. Till next time, search on guys! <laughs>